And in at number 10, Tommy Lee Jones. Hey, remember when I said that some of these may not be confirmed? This one is most definitely confirmed. Tommy Lee Jones already gives off those vibes that he may be a grumpy dude in real life, but don't take my word for it. Listen to Joan and Melissa Rivers. They had direct interactions with this celebrity and every time list him as the worst to deal with. Who's given you the worst red carpet interview? Tommy Lee Jones. Oh, no question. He's at the top of everybody's lists. Joan has stated before that he acts like a snob and because he went to Yale, he therefore believes that he's better than everyone. In at number nine, Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell is a comedian and known for crossing the line a few times even as she worked as a host for The View. Unfortunately for Rosie, she never learned how to turn off the rude behavior when it came to her personal life. According to reports, the reason why she was fired from The View was due to multiple people on the set saying that she was far too mean to finish the season with. That was in 2007 and meant that she wouldn't even complete the first season of the show. Rosie did eventually return back to the program later on, but promised that she would be a much calmer version. However, that comeback only lasted five months after she released her contract to focus on her family following a divorce with her husband. Entertainment Tonight had interviewed some of the staff that worked with O'Donnell and here's what they found. O'Donnell, who has a reputation as a demanding and sometimes abrasive boss, didn't feel like her strengths were being properly used by ABC, according to those close to the 52-year-old comedian. Compounding the problem were tensions with the co-host Whoopi Goldberg and behind-the-scenes executive turmoil at The View, which recently shifted to management under ABC News. Rosie confirmed to be rude. If Whoopi Goldberg doesn't like you, we, we got a problem. In at number eight, Jared Leto. No, no, that's not his name. It's Jared Leto. Jared, Jared, oh, sick. Uh, big ups, man. What's your name? Grinder. Jared Leto certainly has had his awkward moments in the press and on stage as you saw there. Upon looking into interactions with this celebrity, I found multiple articles about how he terrorized the cast and crew of Suicide Squad. He fully committed to the role of the Joker and it was nasty. He treated Margot Robbie as if she was Harley Quinn, so imagine that dialogue on a daily basis. Plus he sent her a rat as a gift. And before they even started filming, Leto decided to give everyone on set a gift. Viola Davis witnessed the incident and and said he did some bad things Jared Leto did. He gave some really horrific gifts. He had a henchman who would come into the rehearsal room and then the henchman came in with a dead pig and plopped it on the table and then just walked out. And that was our introduction into Jared Leto. In at number seven, Carrie Underwood. Carrie is a notoriously private person that doesn't resort to acting rude to keep things private. However, the worst of the worst interactions have been from the people that had to work with Underwood. In Toronto, Carrie was the headlining act at a major charity event, but when walking down the red carpet, she repeatedly snuck of the event staff. The PR staff is in charge of directing the celebrities down the carpet so that they don't get caught up with you know, interviews or too long of a photo shoot. While one of them was trying to do their job and direct Carrie, she said that Underwood looked at her with disgust as she sized her up and down before walking away. Besides that, there's also her strange attention grabbing posts. A while back, she had reported that after a bad fall, she needed 40 to 50 stitches in her face and that she would look completely different. Then she posted a photo and everyone said, uh, nothing has changed. You look exactly the same. Quit being so rude to people who have actually had terrible things done to their face. In at number six, John Hamm. I have what, the nerve what? to not be in love with John Hamm. What happened? I just think he's like douchey. Say what you will about Kathy Griffin, but I actually feel bad for her in this scenario. Here she is getting invited to an exclusive Hollywood dinner, getting to meet Jack Nicholson for the first time, only to have John Hamm yapping in her ear. No matter who you ask in Hollywood, most people will fawn over how much they adore and love John Hamm, yet Kathy has consistently upheld that he is one of the rudest celebrities that she's ever met. Even in her memoir, she wrote about how Hamm had repeatedly harassed her at a party for no reason. While intoxicated, he called her old and topped it off by saying that her career was a failure. It's no wonder he worked so well as Don Draper and Mad Men because that's actually who this celebrity embodies most. In at number five, Christian Bale. What is he doing there? Do you understand my mind is not in the scene if you're doing that? I, I absolutely apologize. Sorry, I did not mean anything back. Stay off the set, man. When this tape leaked, Christian Bale not only had to go on a press tour for his new movie, but an apology tour as well. That Christian Bale rant had so many expletives in it that I was almost certain that I couldn't even find a clip for this video. While filming The Terminator Salvation, a crew member had accidentally walked onto the set, interrupting Bale while he was, I don't know, acting super seriously. This sent the celebrity into a downward spiral of anger where the F word suddenly became punctuation for his sentences. He nearly stopped all production on the movie just so that he could release his frustrations on the hardworking film crew. We get that some acting requires intense focus, but regardless, if someone breaks that focus, that doesn't give the actor license to scream at them. In at number four, Kanye West. The young lady seems like a perfectly nice person. She's getting her award. What's he doing Why would he there? do that? He's a 
Now, I'm sure that the editors had to bleep that, but even President Obama has confirmed how rude Kanye is. During a 2009 press interview at the White House, Obama didn't realize that his mic was still on. The interviewer was asking the president how he felt about what Kanye did to Taylor Swift, although he didn't seem shocked that Wes could be so rude. Not only did Kanye's famous VMA interruption get him more negative press than when he said that George Bush hated black people, but he doubled down on his rude behavior. When Trump became president, Kanye continued to treat others horribly. He toted a mega hat while also saying that slavery was a choice. On top of his political controversies, the rapper from Chicago has also repeatedly dragged Taylor Swift's name through the mud, even having his wife just join in on their gross behavior. In number three, Ariana Grande. <laughs> Ariana Grande is a confusing one because at times you feel bad for her, but then she'll turn around and have a diva moment like that and you just go, damn, that was really rude. She turned to her red carpet assistant and told her to get out of the way because she was ruining the photos. She also had a run in with Juliana Rancic and according to Juliana, while interviewing her, Ariana poked her in the side and gestured for her to switch positions in front of the camera like while the interview was going. When the interviewer didn't know what she meant, Ariana leaned in and made it very clear. She said, I only allow photos to be taken from my left side, my good side. Oh, and let's not forget her infamous donut licking scandal. That is, that was nasty. While at a bakery with some friends, Ariana just licked two of the donuts on display, didn't pay for them, didn't even eat them. Just laughed and then walked away. In at number two, Mel Gibson. Where do we even start? Oh yeah, now I remember. Oh, great editor God, can you please roll the clip? I deserve to be What's even more disturbing is that what you just heard was the fourth phone call and surprisingly enough that was one of the least aggressive ones that I could find. The odd thing about Mel Gibson is that throughout the 80s and 90s he was a nice and well respected lead actor. He was becoming well known for the Lethal Weapon movies and some believe that his ego just started getting a little too big. These vicious voicemails are the result of a drinking problem combined with coping that he was no longer Hollywood's go-to guy. With that much pent up anger and untreated mental illness he was destined to be a rude dude. Last but not least our number one spot, Rihanna. Rihanna takes the cake for the rudest celebrity in Hollywood after this online bullying scandal. In 2010, Rihanna attended the Echo Awards in this green catsuit dress with like bat wings. It was strange. That's really the only way I can describe it. Oddly enough, this look was a huge hit with her fans, so people everywhere were making their own versions. Unfortunately for 16 year old fan Alexis Carter, she got to see her idol in a whole new light. When she posted her photo trying to pay homage to her favorite artist, she was bullied by a lot of people, including Rihanna, who posted this meme. Then just a few minutes later, she posted this meme. Can you imagine working so hard on making your prom dress to look like Rihanna's and then she says it sucks via Twitter? What a time to be alive. At least celebrities are exposing themselves for us. So. For that, we thank you. In at number 10, here's Morgan. Here's Morgan gained a reputation for being rude during a scandal with Meghan Markle. And there's actually a dating story behind it that makes the whole thing even more juicy. So apparently, Piers asked Morgan out on a date before she was with Harry, of course. And rumor has it that they went out on the date, but Meghan ghosted Piers after, so this could be the reason that he is constantly critical of her. More recently, after Meghan's explosive interview with Oprah Winfrey, Piers did not hold back trashing her on Good Morning Britain. Before him and the other hosts could even even discuss the topic, he went on raging about how the interview is tarnishing the reputation of Britain around the world and hurting everything the Queen has worked so hard for. He also said that he doesn't believe a word that she says. He later left the show after outrage against his comments. In at number 9, Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato got tons of backlash after she tried to cancel a small business because she didn't like the products that they were selling. Demi decided to grab some frozen yogurt from a popular foyo place in LA called The Big Chill, but she wasn't happy with what she saw while in the shop and shared her disdain with her over 100 million Instagram followers, writing on her story, quote, finding it extremely hard to order froyo from the big chill when you have to walk past tons of sugar-free cookies slash other diet foods before you get to the counter. Do better, please. Adding the hashtag diet culture vultures. This caused an online feud between Demi and the shop, where Demi called them diet vultures. Well, they said they were just selling products for their broad customer base, which includes diabetics, celiac, and vegans. The general consensus around this whole event is that Demi is an entitled Karen, and she needs to realize that the world does not revolve around her. Of course, her anger was spurred from her long struggle with food issues. However, she should not have publicly tried to ruin a small business, especially during a pandemic. In at number eight, James Corden. James Corden seems really nice on camera, but is well known for being awful offset. His 
rep is so bad that he did a Reddit AMA in 2019, and it practically turned into a roasting session, with tons of people bringing up terrible encounters they had with Corden. Apparently, he goes out of his way to be mean, like advocating for lower pay for TV writers. Literally, why would a rich celebrity ever do that? I have no idea. Apparently, Corden is also known to be rude when fans ask for photos or an autograph with him, especially if he's on set filming. Members of his crew have also claimed that he throws tantrums over minor things and is terrible to work for. He's basically the male version of Ellen. In at number seven, David Letterman. Several old interview clips of David Letterman's have resurfaced recently, and many are saying that he crossed major lines. One example was with Lindsay Lohan from 2013. She did the interview recently at a rehab, and Letterman persistently asked her questions about it. Even though she said many times during the interview that she didn't want to talk about it, he still kept pressing, leading her to cry. Next up was Janet Jackson. Letterman was pressing her about her infamous Super Bowl incident, asking her questions about how the wardrobe malfunction came to be. Right after she was asked about it, she replied, quote, I don't want to relive any of that. But Letterman kept asking while Jackson looked very sad. And in both of these cases and more, Letterman was definitely rude to his guests and crossed major lines with them when they couldn't stand up for themselves. In at number six, John Mayer. John Mayer is known for his sensual songs about love, but the image that you have of him in your head is probably not true. And he's actually pretty rude in real life. Mayer has spoken poorly about a lot of women that he's dated, including Jessica Simpson and Jennifer Aniston, both of whom still hold grudges to this day. And he said some pretty nasty things about women in general as well, making very inappropriate comments about women and even going so far as to say that he only finds white women attractive and literally no one else. And speaking of all that, John has also used a lot of racial slurs in the past, saying the N-word with the hard R on a few occasions, and he actually never even apologized. So yeah, remember that next time you hear him on the radio. Halfway at number five, Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams basically trashes most celebrities on her show and has a reputation for taking low blows when talking about celebrities. She's made enemies out of practically everyone in the business for her mean-spirited rants. One person she has savagely gone after is Meghan Markle. When Harry and Meghan first got together, she said, quote, there's way too much drama with her and this will not work out. When the two later got married and Meghan became a royal, Wendy said on her show that Meghan, quote, weaseled her way into the kingdom. Then when Wendy was talking about the documentary, Harry and Meghan in African Journey, Meghan spoke about how she was warned that she should stay away from Harry, as the tabloids would ruin her life. But Wendy didn't buy that and said, quote, yes, you did. You knew exactly what you were doing. Please don't try to garner sympathy from us. In at number four, Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson has just made enemies out of the Paul brothers after he publicly trashed Jake Paul during his boxing stream. Before the Jake Paul Ben Askren fight, Davidson, who was the host, went viral several times for mocking Paul during backstage segments. At one point, Davidson even asked a question that ended up getting believed in the broadcast. Many believe it was related to the recent claims by a woman that Jake forced himself on her. Later, Davidson also said that he should be in jail. After the fight, Jake and the entire Paul family trashed Davidson, with Jake saying that Pete will not be invited back to host. Jake's dad even said at one point, quote, can I fight that piece of sh**? And at number three, Michael Bay. Not only has director Michael Bay been referred to as a major sexist by celebrities like Megan Fox, he probably doesn't mind, as celebrities speculate that he wants a dictator-like reputation on set. Apparently, he treats his set like a war zone and directs his staff like they're his subordinates that need to be put in place. But he doesn't keep those strict rules for himself, and he's been known to show up hours late for shoots, and in the moment his feet touch the ground, it's go, go, go from there. He basically wants everything done very fast and leaves no room for joking around or even contemplating anything. His staff has also claimed that he berates them for hours and hours on set with harassing comments. In at number two, Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber has done some insane stuff over the years, like almost running over a photographer in one of his cars. He's done other controversial stuff, like spit over a crowd of adoring fans. This happened in Toronto. Justin took to his balcony where hundreds of people were desperately waiting outside to see a glimpse of the star. But when Justin came out, he actually spat on them. Him and his wife also don't seem to have thick skin and have been known to sue people on TikTok who expose things about them that they don't like, like one plastic surgeon who exposed what procedures that he thought Haley had done. And finally, at number one, Michael Jordan. I actually didn't know this before, but apparently Michael Jordan is one of the rudest and meanest celebrities out there. Rapper Chamillionaire exposed a story of when Jordan was incredibly rude to him. The rapper met Jordan at a party and wanted a picture and autograph with him, which Jordan refused. Chamillionaire said that Jordan told him, quote, I'm not taking pictures with anybody. Then when 
when the rapper tried to explain that he was a huge fan and had just purchased a $7,000 commemorative Michael Jordan jersey, Jordan replied saying, quote, you know what? I'll tell you what, I'll pay you $15,000 right now for a jersey from me and I'll take a picture with you. Jordan is known to be a businessman, but that is just ridiculous, especially after he had already bought a jersey, like that's crazy. Jordan was also apparently banned from a Miami country club because he was rude to an official when he was confronted about what he was wearing. Jordan's team later released a statement saying, quote, I guess it's their loss, as MJ is a great golfer and a great guest. In at number 10, Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer has legendary status for being one of the rudest and most difficult people to work with in Hollywood. Since the early 1980s, Kilmer was booking gigs left and right, plus he proved to be commercially viable with the major success of the film Batman Forever, which ended up booking him several more roles and perhaps adding to his bad reputation. While working on the movie The Island of Dr. Moreau, the director said Val would show up and an argument would happen almost immediately. John Frankenheimer ended up replacing that director after he only worked three days with the actor before being fired. Still, even John said, I don't like Val Kilmer, I don't like his work ethic, and I don't want to be associated with him ever again. In at number 9, Katherine Heigl. Katherine Heigl seems to be the type of celebrity that says yes to every opportunity, and then when she regrets it later, she just openly bashes her decisions in the public eye. The first case of this happening was when she co-starred opposite Seth Rogen for the Judd Apatow film Knocked Up. Seth Rogen said at the time that he was having a great time while working with Heigl and mainly because she was improvising a lot of her own stuff, which was great for the film. However, not too long after that, she did an interview with Vanity Fair and expressed just how much she hated the movie. Heigl said, It was a little sexist. It paints the women as shrews, as humorless and uptight, and it paints the men as lovable, goofy, fun-loving guys. It exaggerated the characters, and I had a hard time with it on some days. I'm playing such a bitch. Why is she being such a killjoy? Why is this how you're portraying women? 98% of the time, it was an amazing experience, but it was hard for me to love the movie. Well, now it's hard for anyone to trust you, Catherine. She had some commentary about Knocked Up after it came out. What'd she say? She, she didn't like it. She didn't like it? But she was so awesome in it, so it, it, we, it was right. confusing. Yeah. In at number eight, Bruce Willis. During a press run for his film Red 2, along with co-star Mary Louise Parker, Bruce was noticeably annoyed that he had to even answer the interviewer's questions. Jamie Edwards from Britain's Magic 105.4 actually called it the most awkward interview he's ever had. Apparently, Bruce was barely present while being interviewed, which led to this super cringe moment. I told you this, Jamie. This part is not acting, what we're doing right now. You might be, but we're just selling the film now. When asked which location he preferred while they were filming the movie, Bruce answered with Istanbul. The problem with that answer wasn't his dismissive tone, the problem was that the film never even filmed there. He just said a place he liked, making that poor reporter's job even more difficult as he tried to maintain his composure. In at number 7, Mike Myers. Mike Myers had built himself quite the career with a successful run on Saturday Night Live that led to his character creations being adapted into movies like Wayne's World. Although when the actor starred as the cat in the film The Cat in the Hat, he was allegedly a nightmare to work with. His co-star Amy Hill spoke publicly about Mike's behavior and she said he had his handlers dress his trailer and his area was all covered with tenting because he didn't want anyone seeing him. It was so weird. It was just the worst. I was miserable. I just thought it was really rude of him to not take us all into consideration. A monster? Where? <laughs> that could have gone better. <laughs> In at number six, Beyonce. Um, being a group as in Destiny's Child. Um, I'm sorry, but I answered this question already. Oh, okay. Did? okay. All right. Beyond the shady looks that she used to give her background singers in Destiny's Child whenever they were off key, Beyonce has also been known to invoke her diva status on more than one occasion. She's avoided eye contact with red carpet assistants and yelled at photographers for not getting her good side and more recently sparked controversy at the Golden Globes. When it was announced that Joaquin Phoenix had won for Best Actor, everyone stood up. Everyone from Leonardo DiCaprio to the ever so rude Ellen DeGeneres. Although Beyonce was noticeably unamused by the announcement and just remained seated even though she was literally right beside him. However, Twitter was quick to call her out for this. One person tweeted, Sorry, but I don't think this is the type of energy anyone should be praised for. I don't know if there was another reason for her sitting, but the fact that she didn't stand with everyone else, especially during a standing ovation, is rude point blank. In at number five, Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen is the exact polar opposite of what you should do when pursuing a career in Hollywood. He carries with him a terrible offset and onset reputation and the debacle he went through in 2011 even led to his contract termination from the show Two and a Half Men. 
For a while, he was all over the news for everything. I mean, substance abuse, domestic violence, and even when he revealed that he was HIV positive. With his history of flying off the drop of a hat and trying to get people fired who speak ill of him, Sheen has had a very difficult time trying to rebuild his career. Also, there was the major shade thrown when Ashton Kutcher took his place on the show Two and a Half Men. In and number four, Madonna. So someone who knows about sound better come up here and explain something to me. <clears throat> I'm waiting. If you thought Beyonce was being a diva, well, who do you think she learned it from? Madonna is the queen of snide and crass remarks, some subtle and some just thrown right at you. When the star appeared on the Graham Norton show, she was blasted by viewers for the way that she interacted with Sir Ian McKellen. Graham Norton had asked if they had already met, and while Madonna couldn't remember, Ian described a very detailed encounter, to which Madonna barely even acknowledged. In fact, she looked very annoyed to even be on the show in the first place. There was also another very awkward moment when Madonna asked Ian what he does, even though he literally just told her that they were on the same show together once for a charity event in Los Angeles. How dare you disrespect Sir Ian McKellen. In number three, Michael Bay. Crazy ability to put up with Michael Bay. This has to be all grips on hand with this thing. It is not to move under the tail. You understand me? Yes, sir. All right, am I very oh. clear? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Not only has director Michael Bay been referred to as a major sexist, but he's also worse than the most feared army general in the world. He treats his sets like a war zone and directs his staff like they are his subordinates that need to be put in their place. Not only that, but when you're filming with Michael Bay, you film on his time. He's been known to show up hours late for shoots, and then the moment that his feet touch the ground, it's just go, go, go from there. He wants everything done fast and leaves no room for joking around or contemplating anything, including how his staff may feel after he berated them for hours upon hours with harassing comments. In at number two, Justin Bieber. Yes, that was Justin Bieber hitting a photographer in his exotic car showing zero regard for human life. On top of that heinous video, the star has also been known to spit on people he doesn't like, which sometimes actually include his own fans. While staying at a hotel in Toronto with some friends, Justin took to his balcony where hundreds of people were desperately waiting outside to see a glimpse of the star, although he only emerged to hawk a loogie down towards them. After this disgusting act, the star seemed to be pleased with himself, turning to his group of admiring friends to laugh. His impressed friends then joined in as they all crowded around and took a selfie on his phone, clearly showing all of the people behind them that they just spit on. Gross. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Shia LaBeouf. They got cameras everywhere, you dummy. I got more millionaire lawyers than you know what to do with, you stupid I'm from it, you dummy. Okay. Aside from the way that he treats police officers when he's drunk, Shia has slowly established himself as the rudest man in Hollywood, especially after that debacle at the Academy Awards with his co-star Zach Gottensagen. While Zach was busy making history as the first person with Down Syndrome to present an Academy Award, Shia was busy rushing the poor guy through his moment in the sun. Zach understandably had a difficult time doing the kind of back and forth dialogue with Shia LaBeouf, and fans noticed just how impatient the star seemed to be getting with him. One person took to Twitter to express her complaint saying, You're on a national stage and you look annoyed at your co-presenter? You're an actor, Shia LaBeouf. At least act like a decent human being. In at number 10, John Hamm. I have what, the nerve what? to not be in love with John Hamm. What happened? I just think he's like douchey. Like, I've known Hammy since he was a doctor on some Lifetime show. Say what you will about Kathy Griffin, but I actually feel bad for her in this scenario. Here she is getting invited to an exclusive Hollywood dinner, getting to meet Jack Nicholson for the first time, only to have John Hamm right in her ear. No matter who you ask in Hollywood, most people will fawn over how much they adore John Hamm. Yet Kathy has consistently upheld that he is one of the rudest celebrities that she's ever met. In her memoir, she wrote about how Hamm had repeatedly harassed her at a party for no reason whatsoever. While intoxicated, he called her old and topped it off by saying that her career was a failure. It's no wonder he worked so well as Don Draper in Mad Men because that's actually who this celebrity embodies most. In at number nine, Mel Gibson. I deserve to be first until I burn the house down. But me first. 
What's even more disturbing is that what you just heard was the fourth phone call and surprisingly enough that one was the least aggressive out of all of them. The odd thing about Mel Gibson is that throughout the 80s and 90s he was like a nice and well respected leading actor. He was becoming well known for movies like Lethal Weapon and some believe that his ego just started getting a little too big. These vicious voicemails are the result of a drinking problem combined with coping that he was no longer Hollywood's go-to guy. With that much pent up anger and untreated mental illness he was destined to be one of the rudest actors in the scene. In at number 8, Christian Bale. Oh, da -da -da -da, like this in the background. What the f is it with you? When this tape leaked, Christian Bale not only had to go on a press tour for his new movie, but an apology tour as well. That Christian Bale rant had so many expletives in it, I was almost certain we wouldn't even be able to use the clip. While filming The Terminator Salvation, a crew member had accidentally walked onto the set, interrupting Bale while he was acting. This sent the celebrity into a downward spiral of anger, where the F word suddenly became punctuation for his sentences. He nearly stopped all production on the movie just so that he could release his frustrations on the hard-working film crew. We get that some acting requires intense focus, but regardless if someone breaks that focus, that doesn't give the actor license to scream at other people. They're humans too. In at number 7, Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones definitely gives off those vibes that he'd be a grumpy old man in real life, but don't take my word for it, listen to Joan and Melissa Rivers who actually had to come into contact with him. Tommy Lee Jones. Oh, no question. He's at the top of everybody's lists. Why? Because he doesn't want to be there. He's unhappy doing the red carpet. They've had direct interactions with the celebrity, and every time that they're asked this question, they put him as the worst to deal with. Jonah has stated before that he acts like a snob because he went to Yale and therefore believes that he's better than everyone else. In at number six, Sean Penn. Sean Penn is no stranger to letting his true colors shine bright. In 2009, he assaulted a paparazzi and vandalized his car, and he once served 60 days in jail for punching a background actor and had to do 300 hours of community service for kicking another photographer. And then in 2013, Team, while he was at a restaurant in a swanky San Francisco hotel, he witnessed a guy trying to just take a photo of him and he freaked out again. Is Sean Penn secretly a vampire that doesn't want his soul removed from taking photos? Like, I, I don't, I honestly don't get it. I understand how this could become very annoying after a while, but it still doesn't excuse this kind of disruptive behavior. According to TMZ, he walked over and slammed the man's phone on the table before telling him that he would make him eat his phone. Then as he was being escorted out, he screamed, do we look like Zoo? animals? Yikes. In at number five, Jared Leto. Big ups, man. Yeah, nice. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> Grinder. Oh, okay. Jared Leto certainly has had his awkward moments in the press and on stage as you saw there. Upon looking into interactions with the celebrity, I found multiple articles about how he terrorized the cast and crew of Suicide Squad. He fully committed to the role of the Joker and it was, well, nasty to say the least. He treated Margot Robbie as if she were Harley Quinn, so uh, imagine that kind of daily dialogue. Plus, he sent her a rat as a gift. And before they even started filming, Leto decided to give everyone on set a gift. Sounds nice, but nope. Viola Davis witnessed the incident and said he did some bad things Jared Leto did. He gave some really horrific gifts. He had a henchman who would come into the rehearsal room, and the henchman came in with a dead pig and plopped it on the table, and then he walked out. And that was our introduction to Jared Leto. In at number four, Tobey Maguire. Looks like Tobey becoming Spider-Man was a terrible thing for his ego. Aside from having a terrible reputation with fans who just want autographs, Tobey's rude behavior has even been documented in the memoir called Molly's Game, which was later then turned into a movie with Jessica Chastain. The author Molly Bloom said that Tobey actually offered her a thousand dollar poker chip at a high stakes game in 2014. But there was a catch. She said Maguire told her to bark like a seal. And when she refused, she said McGuire told her, I'm not kidding, what's wrong? You're too rich now? You won't bark for a thousand dollars? Jeez, can't get ruder than that. Or can we? In at number three, Catherine Zeta-Jones. Catherine Zeta-Jones apparently really did a number on a young fan of hers way back and it truly is unforgivable. The woman remembers going to an advanced screening of The Mask of Zorro when she was only eight years old and she actually had a chance to interact with Catherine and she excitedly told the star that she wanted to be an actress as well. The woman then said, she turned to me, looked me up and down and said, you're pretty enough I suppose. Then went back to her conversation. The woman went on to claim that in many ways that moment was the turning point when she went from feeling at ease in the world to constantly thinking about how everyone was judging her based on her appearance. Damn it, Zeta Jones. In at number two, Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell is a comedian and known for crossing the line a few times, even as she worked as a host for The View. Unfortunately for Rosie, she never really learned to kind of turn off that rude behavior, that attack dog style commentary, and especially when it came to her personal life. 
According to reports, the reason why she was fired from The View was due to multiple people on set saying that she was far too mean to finish the season with. That was in 2007 and meant that she wouldn't even complete the first season of the show. Rosie did eventually return back to the program later on, but promised that she would be a much calmer version. However, that comeback only lasted five months after she released her contract to focus on her family following a divorce with her husband. Entertainment Tonight had interviewed some of the staff that worked with O'Donnell and here's what they found. O'Donnell, who has a reputation as a demanding and sometimes abrasive boss, didn't feel like her strengths were being properly used by ABC, according to those close to the 52-year-old comedian. Adding to the problem, there was also tensions with co-host Whoopi Goldberg and behind-the-scenes executive turmoil as well, which recently shifted to management under ABC News. Rosie confirmed to be rude. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase is without a doubt a legendary comedic actor, but all of those pratfalls he did in his use must have really turned him into a grumpy old man. He has earned himself perhaps the worst reputation in Hollywood just from being extremely difficult to work with. I mean, when it works, it works, but most of the time he is a huge pain. When actor and comedian Rob Hubel met Chevy at the Upright Citizens Brigade show, he was so excited that he accidentally interrupted a conversation that he was in. Rob was a longtime fan and just couldn't contain his joy, but Chevy responded by slapping him in the face and then said, can't you see I'm talking to somebody, kid? 